have studied about the pelvic diaphragm which is formed by levator ani and we have seen the three parts which constitutes the levator ani. Now everything below this pelvic diaphragm is perineum. So when we study perineum, we study it from the outer side. It means from the skin we start studying the perineum and we dissect it layer by layer. So let's discuss first the boundaries of perineum. So perineum is basically, as I have told you, we'll study it from this side. Levator and I, we were studying from the pelvic side. We were studying from this side. But when I'm discussing perineum, we'll discuss it from this side. Okay. Now, the perineum, the boundaries are anteriorly, it is formed by lower border of pubic symphysis. Then laterally, the ischial tuberosities and behind by the coccyx. So these boundaries of perineum correspond to the boundaries of pelvic outlet. Okay. These structures which are covering this perineum and which is separating it from the external environment is the skin, not just normal skin, but the skin forming your external genitalia. It is called as vulva. Okay, so we'll see what all parts of external genitalia constitutes vulva. So this area below the levator ani, so somewhere here is attached levator ani. We have discussed in the obturator fascia was this muscle or fan-shaped muscle attached. Below this is perineum. We'll start studying it from here and slowly when we'll start studying it from here, slowly we'll reach the levator ani. Okay. So, if we'll see perineum, it is corresponding to the boundaries of pelvic outlet. It's again diamond shaped. So, this diamond shaped perineum could be easily differentiated into anterior urogenital triangle and posterior anal triangle. So, where does the perineum lie? Basically, it lies between your buttocks in the lower trunk. All that area is constituted by perineum, right? So, as I have told you that it is divided into anterior urogenital triangle and posterior anal triangle. We are basically concerned with the anterior urogenital triangle. It's a triangular shape area and if we discuss the boundaries of urogenital triangle, then it is formed by the pubic symphysis anteriorly. Posteriorly, an imaginary line connecting the ischial tuberosities and laterally, laterally these two ischiopubic rami. So, this is the triangular area of anterior urogenital triangle. Posterior to it is anal triangle. Okay. Now, this anterior urogenital triangle is supported by the urogenital diaphragm. So, as I have told you that levator ani is the muscular separation between pelvis and this perineum. Below levator ani, anteriorly lies a triangular diaphragm called urogenital diaphragm which is supporting the anterior area of the perineum. It means it is supporting the urogenital triangle. Since it is triangular in shape, it is also called as triangular ligament. Between the skin and this urogenital diaphragm which is covering the perineum anteriorly, between these spaces, there is a space formed called as superficial and deep perineal pouches. Okay. So, if we discuss the skin and the urogenital diaphragm, between these two lies your pouches. So, we have to discuss the boundary of pouches and the content of pouches. So, it is not tough if we go step by step and try to understand anatomy and correlate it with the pelvis. So, as we have discussed, the boundaries of urogenital triangle are by pubic symphysis anteriorly. Posteriorly, an imaginary line joining these two ischial tuberosity and laterally this ischiopubic rami. This is your anterior urogenital triangle. And supporting the urogenital triangle is your urogenital diaphragm. Supporting it is urogenital diaphragm, also called as triangular ligament. This urogenital diaphragm is covered by the fascia. Okay. So, this urogenital diaphragm is nothing but it is like the pelvic diaphragm, urogenital diaphragm is also made of muscles. So, levator ni was the muscle which was forming your pelvic diaphragm. It is also made of muscles. So, two muscles form the urogenital diaphragm. You have to remember the names. It is formed by two muscles which are deep transverse perineae, deep transverse perineae and sphincter urethrae. They both are forming your urogenital diaphragm, a muscular diaphragm. This muscular diaphragm is covered by a fascia 
inferiorly and superiorly. So, inferiorly, so this is the urogenital diaphragm somewhere here. Inferior fascia is called as perineal membrane. So, inferior fascia is perineal membrane and a fascia must be lying superior to this urogenital diaphragm. It is the one which is connecting it to the levator ni. Right. So, if we go layer by layer, somewhere here will lie your skin, your vulva. Okay. Then again, after skin, you will find some fascia, the superficial and deep fascia. And then will come your urogenital diaphragm. Then a thick diaphragm will come. But this urogenital diaphragm is being covered by perineal membrane. We have discussed. So, here is the perineal membrane. So, between this perineal membrane and this fascia, which is underlying the skin, is your perineal pouches. Okay, so here lies the perineal pouches whose content we have to discuss. So, if we are dissecting this urogenital triangle layer by layer, what we will found? So, we are going from outside to inside. So, outside there is skin which is forming your vulva. Then there is superficial fatty layer, superficial fascia which is fatty. Then there is membranous layer of fascia. Then comes a pouch called as superficial perineal pouch and then comes your perineal membrane which is nothing but the fascia covering the urogenital diaphragm. Once this perineal membrane is peeled off, you will find the urogenital diaphragm. Urogenital diaphragm is nothing but the deep perineal pouch. So, the deep perineal pouch is actually that area where that urogenital diaphragm is lying. So, the contents of deep perineal pouch is nothing but the urogenital diaphragm itself, right? So, if we go from outside to inside, you will find skin which is the vulva, then you will see superficial fatty layer of fascia, then you will see membranous layer of superficial fascia which is called as Coley's fascia. It is also removed, when this is removed then a space comes. This empty space is superficial perineal space, superficial perineal pouch. After this pouch or the wall which is forming the roof of that pouch is your perineal membrane. Perineal membrane which is inferior layer of urogenital diaphragm. Okay. When this perineal membrane you will remove, you will find what? You will find urogenital diaphragm. Okay. Which is nothing but the deep perineal space. It is same. Right. And after this deep perineal space, there will be superficial fascia of urogenital diaphragm, right? So, these are the contents layer by layer which will you will encounter once you will start dissect, dissecting the perineum.